So what is Traderware? All right, well, uh, Traderware is the class of software and devices that uh, maliciously acts to betray your privacy behind your back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, any specific examples? I know, was it the Sony Rootkit? Was that one of them? Yes, uh, probably the best known example of this is the Sony BMG Rootkit from, right. uh, from 2005. Uh, Sony BMG sold its uh, its music CDs uh, with a secret hidden root kit so that if you put the CD in into your CD player in order to play it and you tried to copy it, um, it not only would it not copy, but uh, it might also erase your hard drive. Uh, Great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's uh, exactly what you want. We, we try to encourage people not to do that. Sure, sure. So. Now that's an extreme example. Mm -hmm. are, are there subtler examples of it? And really what I'm getting at is for a developer, how do they make sure that they aren't inadvertently engaging in this? Well, there are certainly more subtle examples, uh, such as the geotagging feature um, on, on some uh, digital cameras. Uh, for example, I think it was last year, uh, Adam Savage put a picture up on Flickr, and uh, he took the picture in his home, mm -hmm. and he didn't realize that he had geotagging turned on, as a result of which everyone learned <laughs> where Adam Savage lives. And I don't think anyone can argue that Adam Savage is not a technically savvy individual. Right. Um, the real difference between a, a cool new feature and, uh, and a work of traderware uh, is consumer choice. And that's the, that the consumer has to make an informed decision to give up their privacy. And then it's a wonderful feature. Uh, when you are uh, sneaking behind their back in order to invade their privacy, then you've just created Traderware. Right. Now, does the rise of mobile make Traderware even riskier? And I'm thinking specifically like the example you noted about location. Um, in some ways. I mean, certainly there's a whole lot more information available. Uh, for example, like pretty much everybody knows that, that your cell phone can be used as a tracking device. Mm -hmm. uh, there was very recently an article in uh, Die Zeit, uh, which was all about a German politician who had uh, sued his cell phone provider for all of the information that they had uh, about his, uh, his geo-tracking and also about all the calls that he was making and the messages that he was making mm -hmm. over a period of months. And he just handed that information over to the paper, and the paper made a really, really amazing uh, infographic. And hmm. you can see just how much information they had about where he went everywhere and every communication that he had. And every one of us uh, has that, that information being tracked about us every day. And that's in, in Germany, where they are subject to EU privacy laws, which are mm -hmm. considerably more uh, stringent than, than the laws in the United States. We imagine that cell phone companies have even more information about where we are and where we're going and what we're doing in the United States. Interesting. I was actually just reading about a software product this morning called Creepy. I think <laughs> that's, so it's, cool I mean, that's what they named it, right? <laughs> so for a product called Creepy that uh, aggregates all of this location data and and plots it on a map. Mm -hmm. And no, that's that's all very cool. Creepy. If you're making a, an informed choice to share this data, sure. and it suddenly becomes deeply uncool right. if it's turned on by default and you're sharing all kinds of data and you did not intend to. So the last question I have for mm -hmm. you. Can you point to any examples of companies that are handling privacy particularly well? I think we have plenty of examples where it's not going right, but what are the examples that we should be pointing towards? Well, uh, I think that, uh, that Twitter, strangely enough, has, has done an exceptionally good job of, of protecting the privacy of its users. Uh, very recently, they received a, uh, a sealed uh, court order for the um, for all kinds of information about three of their users who had been uh, volunteers for WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. And uh, their, uh, their attorney, uh, AMAC, uh, chose to fight that court order and got it unsealed so that uh, the users became aware that the government was going after this information and they could get themselves lawyers. And that's how EFF wound up representing Brigitte Jones' daughter, uh, an Icelandic MP whose information was being subpoenaed. Uh, and uh, not only were we able to uh, to fight turning over that information, but we've also been fighting to get uh, the rest of the court order unsealed because we're fairly certain that this order did not just go out to Twitter, but it also went out to a number of other companies mm. who may have simply turned right over and given them the information instead of fighting for the rights of their users. Right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you.